join to participants welcome to day 3 we are about to begin the session in just 2 minutes time thank you Uh, may I request Dr. Ritesh to please start the session? Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are very good. So, good evening. I am joined to everyone present here. I, Dr. Ritesh Singhal, again welcomes you all on this third day of FDP on machine learning using Python for beginners. Yesterday, uh, Mr. Pratik Vashisht explained how to work with Python. We discussed various tools and in, in the program of programming in Python, including Python libraries, Anaconda, uh, uh, Jupyter notebook, control statements, operators, condition statements, built-in and user-defined functions, etc., etc. Hope you understand well this thing. Going further, today we'll learn about data visualization using Mapbot library. Mohammad Azib shall take up this session. Now I request my colleague Dr. Sanmitra Das to introduce Mohammad Dasi. Sanmitra Das, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Okay. Uh, so a very good afternoon to the respected director, sir. Sir, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. 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 A uh, very good afternoon to respected director, sir, my faculty colleagues, and all the participants. I have been given the privilege of introducing our resource person, Mohammad Azib. Mohammad Azib is a corporate trainer for AI, ML, cloud computing, IoT, deep learning, and neural networks. He did his schooling from Regency Public School in 2008. After that, he completed his BE in Electrical and Electronics Engineering from Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering. He has worked as a senior technical service consultant at IBM Private Limited from 2014 to 2018. Then he worked as a technical specialist at Dell Technologies from 2018 to 2021. He is certified in Microsoft AI Fundamentals, Oracle Machine Learning with Autonomous Database, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure 2021 Developer Associate, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure 2021 Architect Professional. As a technical trainer, he's conducted various trainings for a variety of colleges, institutes, and educational hubs, both at the workplaces and at innovative centers. He has traveled extensively throughout India to conduct training on different technologies associated with various leading edtech companies like MakeSpace, ATS Learning, Make Intern, Learn to Upgrade, TechWid Labs. He's working as a freelance trainer to deliver workshops for students, corporate clients, as well as faculty related to cloud computing, web development, AI ML, IoT, Excel, machine learning, etc. So in a nutshell, he is a knowledgeable trainer who is fully committed to delivering unique and innovative learning concepts that all the learners will love to learn. So a very warm welcome. Over to you, Mr. Azib. 
thank you so much ma'am and that was thank indeed you, a pleasure thank you thank, thank you, you. Sir. right yeah so i think ma'am has introduced me quite extensively so i guess we will uh, go ahead and begin the session okay so from what i have been told uh, we have covered up extensively on you know the basics on how to use the editor and how to go ahead and work on the basics of python and everything so that's where we will start with we will go ahead and we will indulge ourselves into the next aspect of this which is going to be the visualization aspect right so we will start with the visualization concept we'll take from bare minimum concepts and we'll try to progressively build up a specific thing so let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll start working on this Please confirm if we can go ahead and uh, view the screen. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Your screen is visible. No? Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah, I have a small PPT with regards to this. We will keep alternating between the PPT and we'll also go ahead and start, you know, performing the coding. So this particular session, we will uh, try to keep it as practical as possible. That means. Uh, and i would like you all to follow along with me that means when i code something i would expect expect that you know you also try and code so that you know we can simultaneously get all the results so that's how it is going to be so uh, a quick introduction to this particular library which we are working on so the name of the library is matplotlib right so this is a specific data visualization library which is available in python so this is specifically meant for uh, people to use machine learning and data analysis right so this particular library is based on another library which we must have had a brief introduction about called as numpy so numpy acts as the building block on which you know matplotlib is written on right so we could be using a few characteristics from numpy and we'll be using a lot of things from python to go ahead and work right so visualization is a very important and very critical aspects in any particular analysis with respect to the fact that visualization helps us understand and gain insight about the data much better right so that's one of the reasons why visualization is considered uh, to be very effective uh, you could you could go ahead and uh, you know perform lots of lots of different things lots of predictions you could create lots of apps performing a lot of things but if there is no specific uh, you know graph kind of a thing which actually depicts the kind of data it will be very difficult for the audience who is actually looking at the uh, data to visualize it and to compare right you might have like you know spreadsheets worth of data okay but that data even though it is in very structured format may not be easily understandable right so if you have like you know some thousand interactions transactions with you know uh, different different commodities being sold for example okay but if you represent that using a bar graph okay you'll be able to understand easily which day the graph uh, the sales was higher which day the sales was lower and so on right so that way visualization is very very effective and very important so that's what we are going to do here we will learn about this uh, particular library called as matplotlib right so the different types of graphs i mean i have just uh, taken a picture again this is uh, some picture from the google website okay there are different types of graphs which you can do okay so we have a bar graph so the next plot which you have is a scatter plot then we have horizontal bars then we have line plots then we have area plots and lo lots of different plots okay we have a few other recognizable plots which you can see this is a pie chart here yep so this is a, a line graph with a bar graph combination we have a pyramid chart we have bubbles here yeah, we have scattered bubbles yep so we have a box plot a lot, lot of different type of graphs are available okay uh, a few graphs have certain importance okay to a few other graphs okay uh, let me let me talk about you know the importance of uh, using you know a particular type of graph in particular scenario okay that's going to be a little bit critical for us to go ahead and perform the task because uh, when you generally use uh, a single type of graph for all the things even though it is permittable it is possible you won't get any errors it's it's not necessarily a good thing to go ahead and use the single type of graph okay so for people who like the bar graph they might generally go ahead and use bar graph for everything yep or for or a person who likes you know say scatter plot or something 
you might go ahead and start using scatter plot for almost everything but that's not how it generally works okay so we have certain different types of graphs for different users okay although we'll not be going ahead and strictly performing that particular type of action we'll instead be learning about you know how to go ahead and draw the different type of graphs okay but let me tell you about this because this is one of the very important aspects where to use which type of graphs yep so let me just open up uh, one note just so that you know i can go ahead and draw the things and check okay all right okay so when we are going ahead and drawing a graph let's talk about the basic way to draw a graph let's say you know we have a few data points okay i'm just uh, taking an example of you know let's say uh, we have a weight and a height data okay so we have the data about you know a few people's weight and height I'm just uh, going to go ahead take a black point height and weight okay i'm just randomly putting in some height let's say there's a person who has a height of 170 cm and let's say his weight is about 56 i'm just writing two three examples let's say there is another person who has a height of height of 176 centimeter and his weight let's say is 65 let's say there's another person who has the height of 182 and his weight is 78 or something okay we have three people's uh, weight and height here so if i have to plot them on a graph what i would mean is i would have a x and y coordinate system yep. so this is what i would mean and i would go ahead and plot these points right so i have 170 and 56 so let's say my x axis i'm going to put up weight here Okay, and y axis i'm going to put up height okay this this for assumption so let's assume this is starting as 55 somewhere here so 56 and 170 maybe somewhere here as a point okay, let's say this is 56 this is 170 here so similarly 65 and 176 would be 65 would be somewhere here possibly and 170 would be 176 would be somewhere here Okay, then uh, we would have 78 as the weight. 78 would be somewhere here, and 182 would be somewhere here. Right? So this would be the three points this way we would have drawn. Yep. So this particular process of plotting the data, so we have a data in a tab tabulated column. Right? So we have the data in a tabulated column. And what we're doing, we are going ahead and representing them on a graph, on an XY coordinate system using various ways so what i have done is i have added markers here to go ahead and mark each particular point so this person one person two person three so three people details have been marked here right so simple as that so this is how you would go ahead and plot so uh, there could be different ways right so this would be one way the other way could be you know instead of this the points which are there let's assume the points are here okay what i would do i would go ahead and join them with a the line this would be another way of doing things right i could either just put the points or i could join the lines or the third way could be you know i could go ahead and i could draw the bars here like this at the same point wherever the points were there I could go ahead and draw the bars like this yep so this would be the three ways so if you keep it in this particular way this would be called as a scatter plot when you have just the markers if you draw the line along with it this is called as a line plot if you draw bars along with it this would be called as a bar graph yep the same data i've taken and i've just plotted them at each point of weight i have plotted the heights and gotten ahead and given the details so these are the three different ways of uh, doing the graph. these are the three most common ways right so similar to uh, this particular thing with different types of data you could possibly draw different type of graphs okay but yeah, the idea remains the same scatter plot is wherein you go ahead and mark x and y coordinates line plot is wherever there are x and y coordinates you go ahead and join them with the line and bar graph is wherever there is that particular point you go ahead and draw a bar yep. so these are the different ways now obviously if you go ahead and draw a bar graph for a data which has two numerical columns that's not going to be very helpful because your uh, weight is not going to be significantly important here 
okay height might matter okay if it was just the height of three different people you could have marked the height but we are also taking the weight and trying to go this so you cannot compare the height and weight here so this is not going to be a very effective graph because the weight values could differ i mean there could be a person um, there could be three people having the same weight so you would have to go ahead and draw the stack graph kind of a thing so it won't make sense right so there are a few graphs and based on you know those type of things you would have to go ahead and draw those type of graphs so let's say for example if we have to go ahead and depict something which is going to be related to a trend okay whenever we are talking about a trend analysis okay trend is something over a period of time okay so like for example uh, one very good example which i can give for trend analysis is like you know stock market price prediction right so whenever we think of stock market price prediction the first thing which comes into mind is there is a line graph coming up okay i can google and show it to you all so if we go ahead and type stock market type in stock market and go into images yep so we will see the line graphs everywhere so this this is a line graph with respect to the time there is a line graph which tells you the change in the values right or if we check at heartbeat even the heartbeat trend is rest with respect to time so at each particular second what is happening like you know if you are calculating for like you know two minutes or something for the first second the heartbeat was low then it was high or something yep so these particular things are the trend analysis so whenever we are talking about trend the first thing which comes into our mind is line so whenever we have to depict something which is with respect to trend analysis we always draw a line graph this is the most preferred way okay so line graph is specifically meant whenever you are trying to depict something with respect to change in time yep so that's when we often use line graph although this is not universally accepted to the dot okay but most problem most probably this is what is going to happen yep now let's say the next example we have to compare two things okay we are performing some comparisons yep so whenever we compare a few things we will always use bar graph like for example uh, if we have you know salary of three different people yep so if we want to know perform the analysis about it so what we do we go ahead and draw a bar graph so we draw a bar graph person a has this much salary person b has this much salary person c has this much salary or something Yep. So we go ahead and draw a bar graph so that we can understand the details about. It. So comparison always use a bar graph. Next, uh, if we have something related to you know the frequency. So whenever we are talking about frequency, we always draw a histogram. so let's say we have you know uh, details about like uh, a lot of people okay so if we have one particular factor like uh, age about the people so based on the age we can go ahead and say we have ages of different people we can go ahead and create a histogram with bins being created something like this yeah histogram will be like you know let's say this is like zero is the age let's say this 10 years 20 years 30 years 40 years 50 years 60 years okay some data and this is going to be between 0 to 10 there are no people between 10 to 20 there are this many people between 20 to 30 there are this many people between 30 to 40 there are this many people 50 to 60 this many people 60 to 70 is many people and so on yep so that's what this particular uh, histogram will go ahead and represent it will tell you the frequency between each range of values between 0 to 10 how many uh, people are there how what's the count of value so that's when frequency is that's why it's called as histogram yeah next uh, most important thing when we have something when when we are determining the composition of you know a value we always draw a pie chart like if we want to go ahead and understand okay uh, out of you know uh, let's talk about the example of sales okay we have sales for you know different regions let's say north region west region east region south region so among them i want to know what was the percentage of sales made by the south region in a particular day so that's when we go ahead and depict the values using a pie chart okay let's say this is my south region for example so i can say south region made about 
32% sales or something. Okay, out of total 100%, which is performed by all the four regions, South region means 32% or something. So that is what composition is being depicted. So we use a pie chart to depict the composition. Right, next. When we have two measurable quantities, Okay, we are trying to get the relation between two measurable quantities. We go ahead and depict using a scatter plot. Right? For example, the thing which we saw here when we have height and weight. Okay, both of them are measurable quantity. There is no one specific thing like you know, there is a I mean if it was region and sales, it would be composition kind of a thing, or it would be comparison. Okay, we are not comparing, we are just taking two measurable quantities. There is height and weight. Okay, instead of height, uh, if it was like in you know, a person name and then weight, it would have been comparison, but we are taking two measurable quantities. In this kind of things, we always go ahead and depict it using a scatter plot. Yeah, so these are some very important, uh, you know, guidelines I could say to check which kind of graphs to use for which kind of details. Yep, so with this basic aspect being uh, understood, let's go ahead, let's dive into, you know, uh, the practical part. Let's go ahead, let's. Uh, use our uh, Jupyter notebook and start working. Okay, since we, I'm assuming we all have Anaconda installed. So I think we should be able to easily launch Jupyter notebook. For me, the Jupyter notebook can be easily searched in the search bar and I should be able to launch it, which will launch it directly from Anaconda. So I'll just search for Jupyter notebook and launch it. It takes a few seconds and it'll open up the browser. So I have my Jupyter notebook page being loaded up. I'm just gonna pause for a few seconds so that you all can go ahead and do it. Once done, please confirm once you have a Jupyter notebook. If you have the folder on which you are working previously, just open that folder. I'm just randomly gonna open one of the folders and let me start working. Sir, if you are using Jupyter Notebook through our browsers, so it, so it will work? Yeah, yeah, it should be fine. As long as we are able to go ahead and uh, open up the Python thing, well, you know, if you are able to execute Python, it should be fine. So, uh, so if what, do, what if we don't have any previous folders? Uh, just create a new folder and start working. So in here, you will have your, uh, this thing, this is similar to your desktop environment, okay? This is your, similar to your file explorer environment. Just go into desktop, you should have desktops there. So under desktop, create a new folder. You will have an option here. On the right side where you have new, click on new folder. So that will create a folder. Okay. And once you have a folder, I think just created now, untitled folder one. So once you are in the folder, now we can click on new and Python 3 notebook. Should be fine. Let's close this previous. Okay, someone says don't have Jupyter notebook. Okay, in that case, please check if you have Anaconda have anaconda anaconda navigator should come up I think that was something which was installed in the previous session is what i'm assuming okay takes a few seconds to launch it mariam do you have anaconda in your system installed mariam siddiqui please respond in the chat box Okay, you have 32 bit system. Okay. All right, Mariam, uh, here's what uh, I can suggest to you as an alternative. Okay. Uh, this will not be exactly equal to what we're doing, but yeah, what you could do is just go ahead and type Google Collaboratory.
so you should get this link collab.research.google.com yeah. so just click on this and it will ask you the options here you can click on new notebook and create a google collab notebook so this works almost similar to how uh, jupyter notebook works but it's a web version which links with your google drive generally okay for better understanding you can probably use this so that you know you don't have to go ahead and install anaconda uh, <clears throat> uh, ma'am, uh, is will this fine if you could go to the Google uh, Colab? I think that should be easy. Yeah. Okay. okay thank perfect. You. Thank you. All right. For people who have issues, I'll just paste this link here in the chat. But uh, this is an online editor, so that means. Uh, even if you're not on this thing, I mean, you always need internet for you to access this. Okay, so it's completely dependent on you having internet access. Okay, the Jupyter notebook, what we're using is an offline thing. So even if I don't have the internet, I will still be able to go ahead and use it. Okay, and that's one of the biggest uh, drawbacks of using Google Colab. It is online. Okay, so uh, on Google Colab, just, just so you know, what we can do is we can click on code here. And start coding here. Okay, just ignore the other things here at the start. Just click on code and start coding whenever where it says the plan. Okay, here's where you can go ahead and start typing. Let's close this. Start typing here. Okay, and I'll just close my Google Colab because I'm switching with Anaconda. I mean the Jupyter notebook here. Right. First, let me just go ahead and rename. I'll just put in today's date here. You guys can name it something so that you know untitled doesn't look good so yeah just name it i generally tend to name my notebooks with the date so that you know i don't get confused with what are the different things okay let's go ahead and let's first go ahead and import the libraries here so i think in the previous session we have learned about importing the libraries or modules okay the first library which we are going to use is just zoom it in okay NumPy. Import NumPy as NP. So NP is the short form I'm using to import this library called as NumPy. That's the first library. In the next line, I'll import another module which is matplotlib. So import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. I'll use shift and enter to execute this and go on to the next line. Right. So NumPy is the library which we are using for our numerical analysis base and matplotlib is the library which we are using for the visualization. Okay, all right, let's continue. Now, uh, when we learned about Python, we must have learned about, you know, uh, variables. Like for example, ABC is a variable. This could store some numerical value, like for example, five. Or there could be some other variable which could store some values, right? So this was what we had learned. Okay, so slightly adding on to it, okay? So there could be an option or there could be a possibility wherein a single variable could store multiple values a list of values right so that particular thing is called as a list in python so a list is a data structure in python which allows us to store more than one value at a single time in a one particular variable so let's say for example abc is my variable name okay and i want to create a list so what i could do is i could open up a big brackets okay square brackets and inside this i could put in the number of values let's say 2 4 six eight ten so this is my list so if i print abc print of abc you'll see that you know the list is being represented wherein it has multiple values two four six eight ten there are five values here right so if i check the type of abc sir please uh, you can increase the font size sir we are not in a position to see 
is this better yes sir okay thank you thank you okay. all right okay so i have checked the type of abc it says that it's a list so a list is a data structure in python which holds multiple values till now what we had seen before this was a particular variable used to be able to store only one value but we can store multiple values as well so that's done using list and list is something which has square brackets and separated by commas okay this lists are similar to something which we learnt in numpy called as numpy arrays like for example when we use np dot array of say 1 2 3 4 or something so let's say i am storing this in arr1 and if i print arr1 it see the numpy array so numpy array and lists are almost similar just that you know numpy array is created using the numpy module of python okay and list is totally from python right so this is using the library of python through which we are performing okay various reasons as to why we need an array instead of you know just using the list when we had list already why do we need an array okay the point is numpy array is done through the library of python which is much faster than the regular python so python is generally supposed to be uh, generally known as something which is very slow in processing compared to other languages like c c++ python is comparatively very slow so c++ and c are very fast like you know if you can i mean just just to give you an idea if we can go ahead and perform 10 particular uh, calculations in c++ python will only be able to do one in that particular time okay so this affects the productivity so to mitigate that what has been done is this numpy library was specifically created with keeping this particular intention is meant to speed up so numpy library the source code of numpy library the way it works and everything is based on the engine of c and c++ and it is being used for python to provide speed and you know increasing the productivity right so that's the reason array is very important okay and array is used most predominantly instead of list yep. so list is again a very simple uh, data structure which has which can have multiple values okay the values could be different okay so it need not be just the numbers it could also be text value the strings could also be there or you could even have the float values okay that's also possible but here i have just taken uh, integer values for our representation okay let's let's do this now for our problem statement let's go ahead we'll take two different lists okay we'll take two different lists the first list i am going to take as x and i will write a few values let's say 1 3 5 7 9 so this is one list i'll take another list called as y and here i'll put in some other values 10 4 8 6 7 okay so we have two list one is my x list and the other is my y list now if i have to go ahead and plot this on a line graph Okay, when I have two values like this, like you know the way we did, we had two values, and I want to plot this on a line graph. Okay, I will go ahead and show these values and check, see how we can go ahead and plot them. Okay, I'll just wait for a few seconds so that you guys can copy the values. Then we'll continue. just for the information how many of us are doing it on our laptops um, maybe no okay sir uh, mm -hmm. mariam mam has ask, ask a question can you see yeah, the chat yeah, yeah. one are not shown left side okay so if you are using google collab Just gonna open up the things. So if you import something here, import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt, and if you execute this, so click on the run button or use shift enter. 
So it takes a few seconds to connect here. On the top right corner, you'll see connecting and ultimately it will go into connected state. And then you should have one here. I'll just close this. Initializing connected, now it should work. Yeah, you should have one like this here. Remember, is this okay now? Okay, anyway, we'll wait for her to respond and check. check. Meanwhile, we'll continue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not after that. Next checkbox not appear. This green checkbox is what you mean, is now, if you're getting the one here when you're executing the first time, this is just the sequence, okay? So if we execute it again, it will become two now. This is the sequence of execution. Okay, I guess we will go ahead, we'll continue. Uh, so yeah, with respect to this particular data which we have, okay, so if I go ahead and draw, write this 13579, on the x-axis we have 13579. So I'll put 13579. Okay, and on the y-axis, We have 10, 4, 8, 6, 7. 10, 4, 8, 6, 7. Yep, so these were the points. This was the x-axis, this was the y-axis. So if I take a graph, okay, this is my x, this is my y. Pardon my handwriting, just using the crude way of representing things. Okay, anyway, so it's saying one value should be mapped with 10. So if it is 0, 1, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, one should be mapped with ten. So ten should be somewhere here, right? So let's say this is ten, eight, six, four, two. I'm mapping it this way. This will be my first point. Second point is three mapped with four. So three and four should be somewhere here. Okay, the third point is five mapped with eight. Five with eight. The fourth point is seven with six. 7 mapped with 6. And the fifth point is 9 mapped with 7. 9 with 7 should be somewhere here. So if I join the lines, so I should have the values like this. Yep. So this is how the line should be drawn. Let me try to make it a straight line. This is how the graph should ideally come up. Right. So when we plot this x values on x axis and y values on y axis. Let's try and see if we can do this on the matplotlib. Right. So we have already imported the library, which is PLT. I have imported matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. So I can use this PLT. Now this PLT has a specific function called as plot. So I'll use PLT dot plot. And plot is a function or a method. So whenever there is a function or a method, there will be a function call or a method call in brackets. Right. So inside these brackets, I would have to pass minimum two parameters. In the first parameter, I need to put the x-axis values. And in the second parameter, I need to put the y-axis values. There are other parameters as well, but they are not mandatory. These two are important. So I'll put x. My x-axis value will be x and comma. My y-axis value will be y. Okay. So I've put plt.plot of x comma y. So plt.plot, plot plot is used to go ahead and draw a line graph or a line plot. Okay, let's go ahead and execute this and let's check. And we should see a line graph being constructed. So the similar graph to what I did manually, 
can be seen here right from 10 this is 1 comma 10 then this is 3 comma 4 this is 5 comma 8 this is 7 comma 6 and this is 9 comma 7 right so those points have been mapped please try this Right, assuming that we all have done this. So what we have done is effectively we have used this plt.plot to go ahead and draw a line graph. So plt.plot is for a line graph. I'm using hash here to write a comment. So whenever I use a hash from that particular point till the end of the line, nothing will be executed. It will be treated as a comment and the Python interpreter will ignore that. So this is my line plot, x versus y. Now, let's say I want to go ahead and use this particular data and draw a scatter plot. Okay, so let's say we want a scatter plot. Scatter plot is something which will be drawn, like you know, let's say I erase this. If I just have the points, okay, that's called as a scatter plot without the lines being drawn. If I just have the points, that's called a scatter plot. So, if I want to go ahead and draw a scatter plot in matplotlib, all I need to do is I need to use the similar function. Okay, they need to use the similar thing. Okay, but instead of plot, I will use scatter. So plt dot scatter of x comma y. This should give me a scatter plot. Simple as that, right? So exact same things. The lines. Okay, instead of the lines, they just have points wherever there is a change in direction, wherever there is an intersection point. So one one comma ten is marked. Okay, then we have 3 comma 4 then we have 4 comma 8 then we have 7 comma 6 and 9 comma 7 all the five points are marked the lines are not joined so that is called a scatter plot all we need to do is change the term plt dot scatter instead of plt dot plot plot will give us line plot scatter will give us scatter plot right next if we need to draw a bar graph using the same data so we can put plt dot bar of x comma y this will give us the bar graph. Right, so you'll get the bar graph. So at one on the x-axis, the 10 values are being predicted. At three, four, four values. At five, eight values. At seven, six values. And at nine, seven values. So you see a bar graph coming up. So you just change the root word, plt.scatter, plt.bar, plt.plot. Okay, this should be helpful for us to go ahead and draw the graphs. Now, similarly, sometimes, you know, people don't like this. Some people like to call this as like, you know, I mean, uh, in a few terminologies, this particular graph, okay, which is a bar graph, is generally called as a column graph. Okay, they assume that this is a column because this looks like a column. And according to them, the bar is the horizontal bars. So if you need a horizontal bar, Sir, because speak. you please, uh, excuse me, sir, because you please just zoom out uh, your screen because it's too big to see. Okay, I thought somebody said it was too small. I, I even I am comfortable with this. So okay. please confirm if everybody uh, is yes. okay with it. Now, uh, yes, this this is, is fine, sir. This, this is fine, right? Okay. Right, sir. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, this is much easier for me as well because course, it's like too big for me as well to work. But since you okay, right? Okay, so if we need a horizontal graph, so all we need to do is we just need to put bar h. So this will go ahead and give us horizontal bar graph. We'll see the graphs, the x-axis and y-axis being flipped basically. That's it. So it will just give the x-axis on here and y-axis here. That's all it will do and give us a horizontal bar graph. So this output, this mm -hmm. memory path, I think it is showing a certain memory path. I this think. thing? Yeah. So how yep. is this will be useful if at all, you know, we need to make use of it? Yeah, actually, this is not going to be useful for us. This is something which will go into the uh, space. Like, you know, if we are trying to investigate about the space utilization in particular uh, Jupyter notebook, that's when it's going to be useful. Okay, for our understanding, this is not at all helpful. I'll, I'll come to that. I'll come on, you know, how we will ignore this. I mean, we don't need this data at all. Okay. This is totally, uh, like, you know, completely uh, irrelevant for us at this stage. When you go into the developing level of, you know, the Jupyter Notebooks or Google Colab, that's when it will actually come up, like, you know, which particular memory resource is being used. Okay, okay. otherwise it's not helpful. We'll, we'll go ahead and check how to ignore. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so there's a question what will happen if the number of elements in one of the list is lesser than the number of elements Yeah, so that was something which I was gonna come up to okay, so let's take this particular list and Let's decrease okay. I'm making this four here. Okay, the x value has five x particular list has five values and y list has four values Okay, I've saved that I've executed that now if I plot You will see a value error coming up the error line here. It says X and Y should have first same first dimension, but have five and four. So it will give you an error straight away that it will not going to go ahead and depict. Okay, so this is one of the very important criteria. Both X and Y should have equal number of values. If not, it will not be able to go ahead and draw the graph. Okay, so that's one of the important things. Hopefully that clears the confusion. Right, and one more thing, the matplotlib library which we are using, we are specifically concentrating only on 2D graphs, okay? So there is an option to draw 3D graphs as well, but uh, that's beyond the scope, okay? So uh, you have an option of drawing 3D graphs, but it's not very, uh, very, very uh, presentation friendly as such, okay? But you can go ahead and visualize. Okay? It takes a little bit of effort, but it will be able to do. So it's not very popular. Uh, but yeah, you can I mean if there is a need you can generally but generally people stick with 2d plots in matplotlib You have other advanced visualization libraries. Uh, for example, there's one library called as plotly Which will help you to go ahead and get dynamic graphs that actually represents 3d graphs very well Okay, we can make use of that. But again, uh, that's beyond the scope uh, people generally tend to stick with 2d graphs and this is good enough for us. I mean, even if we go ahead and pursue a career in machine learning or something, matplotlib should be sufficient for us to go ahead and visualize things. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's take another example and let's plot a line graph. Okay. So I just wanted to show how we can go ahead and plot different type of graphs. So I just use the same data and plot a different type of graphs. Okay. Let's go ahead and check another plot uh, another graph uh, let's take the data let's say i'm going to take an array okay so i'll take the variable as arr1 i'll use np dot array of say one two three four five okay, this is my first array i'll take another array np dot array of four seven two eight So there are two arrays here. I've taken two arrays of five each. Let's let's take six elements. Okay, six. Let me add another value here. Let's say nine. Okay. 
so i have two arrays okay now if i have to go ahead and plot it is simple plt dot plot this will give me a line graph on my x axis i am going ahead and placing arr1 on my y axis i am placing arr2 so this will go ahead and give me the array exactly similar to how we did one and four will be plotted here one comma four then this is two comma seven and so on yeah, you can check the details right so that means we can either use the list of values like we used here or we could use the numpy arrays as well to go ahead and perform or it could be a mix and match so on the x-axis you could have an array and on the y-axis you could have a, a list as well okay there are other data structures in python called as tuple or we have another library when we go into machine learning called as pandas so you can use the pandas elements or the tuple elements to go ahead and do so but we have learned two data structures one is you know numpy array and the other one is python list so both of them can be used okay so x axis could be one and y axis could be both uh, different or both could be same or both could be different ultimately the only thing which matters is the length of elements on the x axis should be equal to length of elements in the y axis as long as that works it should be easily acceptable right now if i have to get rid of this line as i mentioned this line is not uh, exactly relevant to us okay if i want to get rid of this line what i could do is i could use something called as plt.show plt.show function will go ahead and get rid of that line for us if we are using a basic editor of python what we are using is the jupyter notebook through anaconda if we have a base installation of python wherein you know the base installation of python like if you install python software on your computer like from python.org and download so you'll get an editor called as ideally okay and a few other editors okay in those editors okay the code is totally different like you know you write the whole code first and then execute it so in that scenario you will have to mandatorily use plt.show to go ahead and get the graph coming up if you don't write this it will just go ahead and execute it will not show you any output the output will be blank okay only when you write plt.show it will show up the output so if you are using a different editor right uh, apart from the jupyter notebook or google collab you need to mandatorily use this plt.show otherwise you will not get the graph okay you will not get any errors but the graph will not be seen so that's the reason the name is show which is used to show the graph but in our particular scenario it is used to hide all these errors or you know this particular things like this is something which is not really necessary for us or uh, this line maybe it's not necessary so that's why we use this plt.show Azim sir. Yes, sir. If uh, somebody got a uh, red mark over the Jupyter notebook, like not connected mm -hmm. the, with the kernels. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how that can be resolved? Yeah. yeah. So if it is not connected, there could be two reasons. One is uh, the Jupyter notebook, when you have launch it, it generally opens up a command prompt, okay, which is telling us the process. So if this is closed, okay, you can close this or you use control c to close this that's when it will be stopped that's one way uh, in which you know you'll get that or maybe there is some error so what you can do is there will be an option to go ahead click on kernel and just click on reconnect here click on reconnect and check if it works okay sir if it still does not work uh, try using the restart option it will restart the kernel if it still doesn't work then close it and relaunch jupyter notebook from scratch and go back into the folder that particular file will be there reopen the file it should work okay thank you sir welcome yeah. all right okay i think uh, we have uh, learned enough about the basics so what we'll do is we will go ahead and we will uh, take a specific data like you know a real life data kind of a thing and we will go ahead and perform the task of you know representing it so we'll take a, a couple of examples and do so let me check the data and check so i'll write the data i'll also share it in the this thing so this is something which i again uh, randomly got from website uh, from google okay so we have three lists 
one is the list for the year so i have the list for year as first year is 1972 and 1982 and 1992 2002 and 2012 i have given enough gaps between them so that you know when i go ahead and write the numbers it neatly matches that's it okay then we have data of two particular uh, cities here okay so let's say we have so this is about electricity consumption of you know the different uh, places okay so i'm just randomly changing the names here i am just taking mumbai mumbai is one state um, one city okay electricity consumption of mumbai is what i'm writing so let's say for 1972 the electricity consumption was 100.6 1982 it was 158.61 1992 it was let's say 305.54 then 2002 it was 394.96 i'll i'll give this data i'll share this in the chat okay then it was 724.79 and this was for mumbai let's take another city let's say i'm i'm going to take a small city let's say let me just take thane okay thane is a neighboring city to mumbai so yeah say 10.5 because it's a small place the electricity consumption is much lesser okay then let's say 25.21 8.65 so so for this gap you are using tab or uh, no i'm just using space okay okay i'm just using this so that you know i can uh, easily recognize i mean uh, the spaces are not generally considered when you're using a comma So okay. Python will ignore all the spaces. So that's the reason I'm using. Uh, the only reason I'm using it so that you know it's neatly aligned in one yeah. line. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, the decimal points and one will make it not neat. So, right. So yeah, let me just paste this, paste this in the chat so that people who haven't written this can write this. assuming everybody is done now this is what i would like you people to do i would want to go ahead and plot a graph okay plot a line graph depicting the electricity consumption in mumbai over the period of time right so plot a line graph depicting the electricity consumption in mumbai over the period of time just going to wait for a few seconds so that you guys can do it and then i'll go ahead and perform it let me just do it so it's simple we'll put plt okay. dot plot on the x axis we'll have year on the y axis we'll have e mumbai done so we'll have the graph so to remove this particular line we just put plt dot show
one thing we always need to remember the last particular line of the graph will always be followed by this the last line will be plt dot show please do not write anything else before below this because it will not go ahead and cause an effect okay now this was for year versus mumbai so i'm just going to change the data slightly okay so you can see from 1992 to 2002 the data is reduced okay that's not generally the case i mean over the period uh, because of urbanization and civilization the electricity consumption increases so i'm just gonna change this let's make this 394 let's see i think this this looks a little better so i'm just gonna change this from 294 to 394 please modify this okay so that you know it actually represents looks like the real life data Okay, I've just changed this. Okay, anyway, so this was for uh, Mumbai. Now, what if I want to get the same thing for Thane? Right. So what I can do? I can just write plt dot plot of year comma e underscore Thane. So I will see another graph being drawn here. So two graphs, one for Mumbai and one for Thane. It is going ahead and depicting and showing me. Of course, from this I can easily understand. The graph having higher values is for Mumbai and high, having lower values is for Thane. And we can compare and check. Mumbai's uh, electricity consumption has drastically increased. Right, so it is exponential rise here. And Thane's electricity consumption is steadily increasing. And first it was nearly constant, but it is steadily increasing. Sir, there is any way to uh, label mm -hmm. these graphs? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll come to that. We'll go ahead and extensively check for the labeling. I mean, that's what I'm going to continue now. Right, sir. Right, so this is the basic representation. I mean, even this is like, you know, much more meaningful than just having this value. So if we had these values, and if we have this graph, obviously we can see that, you know, the visualization is much better. I mean, we can understand that, you know, the values are increasing. The, the electricity consumption is highest in the year. After 2010, it was highest, okay? Even though the exact date is, year is 2012. Okay? We can see, we'll, we'll see how to modify this and everything. Yep, so we can see the graph. And we can understand we can check the comparison so mumbai's graph was always higher than thane's graph okay and we can check the exponential rise in mumbai's electricity consumption and slow and steady rise in thane's electricity consumption in the last decade also the electricity consumption has uh, slightly increased uh, in an exponential way otherwise, otherwise it was very linear so these are the conclusions we can check just by having a look at this particular thing right Let's go ahead and let's look at different levels of customizations which we can perform here, right? So the graphs are written. Uh, so let's go ahead and customize yes, and check. One, one clarification, yep. why, why mm -hmm. this 2012 year is not shown in the graph? Yep, so this is the default thing which is coming up. So the graph mm -hmm. is uh, telling us. Okay, but we'll look at, you know, uh, how we can go ahead and customize that so that, you know, the dates which are exactly there can be seen. Okay, we'll, we'll check that as well. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to leave this. Uh, I'm even going to remove this. So this was my crude way of representing. With just two lines, I can see this. Now let's customize and see how much better we can make. So first of all, we'll use plt.show. That was to remove that particular line. I've just copied that here so that you know we can compare here and check. The next thing which I'm going to do is, let me go ahead and change the color. Let's say you know I don't want to have this color. Okay, I don't want the blue color here. I want a different color. Let me put color here. Color is an attribute. I'll start adding attributes here. There were two attributes which were mandatory. One for x-axis, which is here. Y-axis is e Mumbai. Now I'm adding optional attribute like color. By default, it has given some blue color or something. Let's say I want red. I can put color equals to red. And you will see the red color line coming up here. Similarly, I'll add color here. So color spelling is C-O-L-O-R, okay, American English. So let's say I want black color here. So I will have a black color line here. Right, so I'm able to go ahead and customize or change the color. Next, let's add the labels for this. I want to know that, you know, I mean, without looking at the code, I want to check and understand which is which city. Okay, so I can add label. 
so i'll put label equals to mumbai here let me execute so even though i put the label there is no label which is seen so generally when you add a label along with the label you need to go ahead and add something called as a legend okay so legend is something which is required so legend is added like this we'll put plt dot legend right so plt dot legend is something which we needs to be added and always remember anything which we do should be always below before plt dot show plt dot show should be the last line so we'll add a legend here so now this legend will go ahead and show us the value here so we can see now mumbai is being added and it shows the color of the line so it shows the red color line is representing mumbai right so i have not added a label for this particular plot when i add a label it should also come up let's add a label let's say label equals to i'll put it as thane I need to put this in quotes okay i made a spelling mistake okay i'll add it as e thane and you will see the black color line is representing thane now right so this way i can go ahead and add the labels so label always works hand in hand with legend so if you don't add the label and you just have the legend it will not show anything or if you just add the label and don't write the legend it will not show anything both things needs to be there right so that's about the legend uh, we can change the position of the legend by default it will select the best possible way but you can change the location so you can put loc equals to there are a few options i'll just put in something wrong here so that i get all the possible options so we can see these are the different options for legend you can write upper right upper left lower right lower left right left center and so on so let me just put center and check see what happens okay the location of the legend i want it as center we'll see the legend in the center yep. but uh, we know that the best position is here even if i don't put anything we'll just put best so it will take best or if you want some other value you can sorry it will i'm sorry sir could you please repeat Yes, uh, just now we have seen that upper and uh, different options mm -hmm. we have uh, seen, na, sir. We can yes. do that. Yeah. So I just write something which is incorrect. Okay. Uh, so just put in some wrong spelling for location, and it is giving us the error. And in the error, you will okay. have the details. Okay. okay. It says unrecognized okay. location. Okay. In that, we need just the help in this. Then we do it. Okay. Okay, this is not available for all the options. Only a few options, like you know, for legend, if you put wrong spelling, it will give you. But if you want to know the correct details, we need to go ahead and check the documentation. Okay, there is an extensive documentation for Matplotlib. So if I put Matplotlib uh, legend, Matplotlib pyplot legend is what we need, right? so if i just type in you will get the documentation from matplotlib you will get all the details i mean you might need to go ahead and check the details about you know things but it will ultimately come up so the location is here so the default location is best okay you have other strings like upper left upper right so you'll get all the details in the documentation right so all the different types of things will be there okay so i'll just put it as upper left Because that's the best position which we can see, so I put it as upper left. I have fixed it. Next, what we'll do is let's increase the size. I mean, the size of the graph is very small. I mean, this is the default size which comes up. If you can see, all the graphs are of same size. Okay, but if you want to increase the size of a particular graph, you can go ahead and increase. So this size of the graph should always be at the top. Okay, even before you write. So the first line should always be for the size. and the last line should be plt dot show rest all the things can be modeled here and there so for the size of the graph we'll use plt dot figure so inside the figure there is a parameter called as fig size i'll define the fig size equals to given some value for horizontal wise let's say i'm taking 10 points horizontally and let's say 8 points vertically let's check so we have 10 points horizontally and 8 points vertically looks like the vertical points are a little more let me reduce it to let's say 6 maybe and then 6 i think this looks a little more valid 
maybe I'll keep it at five. Yeah. I think this is okay for me. Okay, based on your screen size, you can go ahead and adjust. Okay, so the first value is for horizontal points, second value is for vertical points. Okay, so it varies depending on you know the screen. My laptop is a 13 inch laptop, so it kind of fits here. But if your laptop is of a bigger screen or if you're using an external monitor to check, you might have to increase the size a little to go it to get it to fit the whole screen. Yep, so but you can go ahead and vary that depending on you know your need. Yeah, but how do we increase this using plt.figure? Use the fixed size parameter and given the values, the value should be in a bracket. Next, we can go ahead and change the way the lines look. Okay, so we have something called as line style. If I don't want it in this particular way, I can change. The line style by default is solid. This is the solid line, which is minus, but I can put dash dash, which will give me a dash line. Or I could use a dash and a dot. This is dash and a dot. So whatever change I make here, it will be reflected in the legend. The legend will have a dash and a dot. So I'll change the line style here as well. So I'll put this as dotted so this is dotted okay so if i put a semicolon it's going to be a dotted line this is the dotted line oh, no i don't like the dotted line let's say i'll put dash dash a dash line okay so my black color line is the dash line and the red color line i have put a dash and a dot so i can go ahead and customize and change the values this way Let's say I want to get the marker for the points which are there. Like for example, here when we drew the line here initially, right? So this particular point, we drew the line, right? So when we drew the line, there were markers, the points which were there, the joint points, right? So this were highlighted, but here those points are not highlighted. You just have a line. So wherever there were actual points, like for example, uh, 1972 versus 100.6. So I need that particular point location to be marked. So I can add a marker. So I can write marker here. Uh, I have different type of markers. So there are a few like there is a star marker. Star marker should give me stars. Okay, and you'll see that star being updated here. Let's put a different type of marker here. Marker equals to dot dot marker. So there will be a dot marker here. Again, what are the different type of markers if we need to check? So we need to go ahead and check the documentation. So under plt.plot, so check for plt.plot. You should have plt.plot somewhere here. L M N plot. So under plt.plot, you should have markers somewhere. So search for markers. So there is a huge list of documentation. So under markers, you should have the details. You'll have the markers here. Again, it. I'm not going to go ahead and check. So you have marker is equal to O as one of the things. Okay, then there is a marker size, a lot of different details. Okay, again, I'm not going to go ahead and check for the details in markers because that's going to go ahead and vary the things a lot. Okay, so yeah, I have shown you how to go ahead and do it. You can change and check. Okay, so uh, two most common markers one is a star marker, there's a dot marker, there is a O marker and different things but yeah that's just representing the different sides so we have something called as marker edge color let's say i'll keep this as green and see the marker color becomes green now right by default it was the same as the line color but it changed to green when i've changed it to green yep so this is something which you can do right i guess that's enough about the way the lines look and everything
let's check at you know how to go ahead and add the labels on the axis what is x axis representing and what's y axis representing so i will put in the plot here plt dot x label x label is for x axis values i can put x label my x axis is if we check it is the years plot right so i can put years in x axis and we can see the years being listed here again the years is not really visible you can see that you know this is much bigger size than years so i can increase the font size of this i can just put font size equals to let's say 13 so we can see the years being higher size now okay, let's make it 14 so that it's slightly more better yeah okay so this was for x label now let's put the y label plt dot y label the y axis what was the y axis electricity consumption so i'll just put in electricity consumption we should have electricity consumption again we can change the font size here change it i guess this is a little air font it's okay next we can add the title plt dot title and we can say electricity consumption pattern over the years just given some title again i can change the font size here make it 15. Right. The next thing, if you see the values here are starting from 1970, but the values on which we plotted the graph is 1972, 82 and so on. So those values are not there. So if you want those values, okay, we need to go ahead and change this particular values, which is called as ticks. So I need to go ahead and add change the ticks here. Before we change ticks, let me just tell you something else. So generally when we draw a graph, when we see a graph, you'll see the grid lines on the graphs coming up wherever there are points you'll see the grid lines right so let's add the grid so we can add the grid by using plt dot grid will enable the grid option so wherever there are points here on the x-axis and y-axis so there will be a grid kind of thing so it will grid is helpful for us to go ahead and represent like you know where the value is lying so this is between 1980 and 85 and the x-axis y-axis value is between 100 and 200 something like this Yep. Let's look at modifying the ticks positions. So let's use plt dot x ticks. In x ticks, we need to have the values which we need. Like for example, if we need these values, so I can copy this list, okay, and I can paste this list in here, and you will see only those values being represented. Right. So write plt dot x ticks. And whatever values you need, only put in those values. And those values points will be listed. If you don't want 1982, for example, just remove it off. And you will see that, you know, that particular point is not listed. This way, whatever value I put here, that value will be written here. So, for example, if I put 1950, okay, even though 1950 is not there, if I put it, you'll see 1950 being written here. Okay, there is no point, but yeah, it will still be written. Or if I put some other value which is in between. Okay, let's say, let's first run this. Let's say I want 1978 or something in between this. Hello. You will have that point coming up. Yeah, you can collectively go ahead and change it this way. If someone had a question? I guess we'll continue. So yeah, this way I can go ahead and change. But what if I want, you know, points uh, 
you know in a very specific manner like you know i want points every two years we could use uh, numpy is one of the particular method called as a range so numpy a range is used to go ahead and generate a series of values okay so let's say i want values from 2 to n in steps of 2 so this will give me 2 4 6 8 up from 2 up till 10 excluding 10 in steps of 2 or if i want it till 11 then it will be 2 4 6 8 10 so this will be the stepper starting point ending point and the step okay this can be used to generate so in that same scenario if i want uh, the points the values here let's say i want the values to start from 1972 and i want to to go up to 2012 let's keep 2013 i want it in steps of 2 i could have these many different values here okay. so i could put this particular points here so i will go ahead and this in plt.ticks so i'll just uh, uncheck this by using a comment option so that you know instead of that particular thing this is executed what we can see is those values are being listed 1972 1974 76 and so on till 2002 all the values which came up here is being listed so you can have those values here like this as well okay it doesn't look nice i mean it there is no space between them so what i could do is I could go ahead and rotate them a little. So I can use rotation is equals to, let's say, 45 degrees or so. We can see this can rotate. Generally, when you have the uh, things which are crowded, we'll see the rotation. So if you make it 90 degree, it will be a proper flat lines like this. It will 45 degrees or maybe 40 degrees, much more suited, looks nice. Right, so you can have the details being shipped like this. So this is for X ticks. You can either keep it this way with the customized value, whatever values you want. Or if you want a list of values in a proper series, you can use the np.a range to go ahead and generate. Again, I have started from 1972. I have gotten the list up to 2013 in steps of two. From 1972, it is constantly adding two and getting those values. And those values are added here in the X axis, X ticks. Right. Similarly, you could do the same for Vitex. I'm not going to do exactly the same thing you can do for Vitex. Like depending on the values which we need, we can go ahead and start and perform the task. Right. So this is a very high level of customizations which you have done from a simple graph like this to going ahead and depicting and looking at each particular aspects and customizing each particular thing. We have done a lot. I mean, there are still more. I mean, if we spend, we could spend like, you know, hours together customizing a lot of different things. Okay. But yeah, we will, I guess we will uh, stop here. I guess we get an idea and a sense of like, you know, a uh, what of the different things which we can do here. All right. So we'll stop here. We'll open the floor for questions. If any of you have any questions with whatever we have done or anything, please ask me. I'll try and answer them. So, uh, sir, how do we save these graphs and then import export uh, it? So, you can right-click actually, and it should be available to for you to save. You can save the image as a PNG. Let's just put this as ABC. Okay, it's a default PNG. It, it, it comes up as PNG. PNG is actually a higher format, a richer format than JPG. So, it will add mm -hmm. a color contrast and everything. So, yeah, by default, it will come. You can change it to JPG as well. I mean, it will work. But yeah, preferable to save it as PNG. Mm -hmm. If I open it up, should be able to go ahead and load it. Yep. So this is how it will come up. But uh, if you need, like, you know, uh, something which is, like, you know, very uh, better, so we can, we have a function in matplotlib called as save fig. Save fig will go ahead and save it. So let's say I'm just saving it as out.png. So it will go ahead and execute. And in our folder, 
if you come back to our folder from from which we had launched so you'll have this file so if i open this you should have all the details like you know the x ticks value y ticks value and everything but if we just right click and save sometimes you know you might not see the access and everything coming up like if i go into download you might not see the access it's very blank here if you see there is access but because of the color contrast it's not seen properly i can see it here very slightly electricity consumption but you might not see it properly yeah. so this way by using plt.savefig it's going to be easier mm. so it will just load it in the same folder in which you have loaded up savefig. Yeah, plt.savefig okay. okay there are a few questions can you define plt once again plt plt we defined at the top import matplotlib.py plot as plt as a, this is just the shortcut for this entire thing so if we don't import this like this we just import it matplotlib.py plot we would have had to use this whole thing instead of plt everywhere does that make sense for y axis will it be plt dot y ticks yes correct y axis it will be plt dot y ticks where we got commands of all this related to graph yeah so the commands can be checked in uh, matplotlib uh, official documentation so under official documentation you will have all the details okay so we are using matplotlib dot pyplot so under matplotlib dot pyplot will have lots of different commands so we only used a few of them so we use the plot command we use the bar command for the bar graph so assume that you know this whole thing plt matplotlib.py plot as plt plt dot bar plt dot bar h we used uh, we didn't use the other things we used a lot of other things like plt dot plot let's go into plot i think we use grid right so we saw grid here somewhere grid grid is something which we used so again details regarding to that particular thing will be seen here like you know which grid what type of grid we didn't customize but yeah you can see a lot of things so we have save fit so we can choose the format what type of dpi you need and all those things we use plt dot plot plt dot plot had lot of different arguments so we can go ahead and check so whatever documentation we need just go ahead and type it in the google search like you know if you need documentation for legend type matplotlib pyplot legend and usually the first link will have that particular documentation details okay we should be able to find All right any other questions before we end the session here today so if we miss the uh, mm -hmm. let's say saving it or whatever so later mm -hmm. we can put the id uh, option and we can get it back or is there some yes so see, uh, this will be saved here in my folder now if i close this okay i didn't save it but i close this okay i can go back into this particular uh, notebook open it up it will open up and you can run it again the all the details which are there will be here i can run it again and it will come up okay yes, so it will be it will be there as in you know this will auto save every few seconds the code which you have written will be auto saved okay check please repeat the step for creating folder all right let's see is there anaconda 32 bit software actually there is uh, anaconda 32 bit i mean when it was initially launched it came up as 32 bit and then we got the 64 bit but i guess you would have to google and search for 32 bit you have a 32 bit anaconda installer as well not sure if the support has been removed but last time when we had checked almost you know a year back so there was 32 bit anaconda you might have to google a little and search for it should be there
please repeat the step for creating the folder so all we did was uh, this was the default uh, thing in jupyter notebook right so when you launch jupyter notebook this is what it came up so all i did was i went into desktop under desktop i wanted to create a new folder so i went into new here on the top right and clicked on folder and that will create a new folder for me this is very well as good as going into your uh, my computer going into desktop and creating a new folder here and that same folder whatever you put here let's say i'm just putting in the folder okay so i'll name this folder as test so this folder will be reflected here if i just refresh this the refresh option i should see the test folder here, which i have just created right so it just works uh, with respect to your file explorer whatever you do here will be reflected here so inside this i created a new notebook that's it Perfect. any other queries dr uh, pratesh are you here Dr. Tesh. Yes, sir. Okay. Mute yourself, sir. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, please paste the feedback and attendance link to the chat. Hello. Actually, okay. Pankaj, okay. sir. Yes, sir. We are getting responses. There is no. Okay. Okay. Now, please. Okay. Now, please. Sir. Proceed for the uh, moment to presentation. Hello. Yes, sir. Samitra, no? Are you ready? Yes, sir. So please, uh, so please yes. proceed further. Thank you, Ajit, sir. In a very captivating and simple way, and you handled the queries also very nicely. So, as a token of appreciation, we present to you the e-memento from the AKGM family. Thank you so much, ma'am. That's Thank really you, kind. Mm, Thank you, sir. So additionally, uh, we want to acknowledge the efforts you put in the session uh, through your examples and the explanation. And you were so kind to be so, uh, you know, connected and giving answers to all the queries all the time you look back to the chat box. So we also would like to facilitate uh, the certificate of appreciation for you. Thank you so much, sir, for the kind session. That's really kind of you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you for allowing me to go ahead and help you with this. It's really appreciated. So, sir, in future, I think uh, if we got the response from the participants, we definitely could have you one more time in coming days or coming months. Uh, thank you so much for this nice session, sir. Definitely, sir. Definitely, yes. Yeah. All right, thank you everybody. Take care, and it was really nice uh, teaching you. Take care, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, organizers. Participants are requested to uh, to fill this form of uh, feedback and uh, attendance. Also, you are requested to uh, write your complete name as you want to print on on the, on the certificate itself. 